G'day, we're Zoom and Betty, and on today's episode we'll be showing you how we're creating our first ever pumpkin patch here on our one acre homestead. But first, we need to address the new uninvited guest that's taken up residence under the house. If you want to skip our snake adventure and just head straight to the pumpkin patch stuff, just click the chapters below. Look at him. This adorable nope rope is an Australian Eastern Brown Snake and is in fact the second most venomous snake in the world. And sure, he's got a cute face, but we can't have him living here this close to the house and opening us up to an accident with us or the cat, who is very unimpressed right now with not being allowed outside. Now, even though these are quite dangerous, they're also a protected species, which means we've got to call in the snake catcher to come get him and see if he can't be removed and released somewhere else he won't be bothering people. The catcher got another three phone calls while he was here from other people needing his help. They're everywhere this season. So after all that destruction, he moved into a different spot and we still couldn't get to him. The catcher had to go on to another job and asked us to watch from both sides for an hour until he returned. So we set ourselves up with snacks and drinks and had the most boring hour of our lives waiting for old mate Snake to reappear. The snake finally reappeared and went back into his spot from before within the bricks and the catcher returned but had to start removing all kinds of junk left under here by the builders about 50 years ago. And after all that, we had no luck. I couldn't film the bit where we almost caught him because I was having to use a long pokey stick, but for now, he has not been evicted. I tried putting some cloths in a bag that have been soaked in chemicals the snakes don't like to smell to try to get him to move out, but the next day he was chilling, sunbaking again right next to them, so that didn't work at all. We've spotted him a couple more times, but he's never there when the catcher comes around again, so for now the cat remains locked up inside and we remain vigilant. So today's a nice sunny day um, after a bit of a rainy weekend so I thought I might make a start on our pumpkin patch since our little baby uh, pumpkins are starting to grow pretty well so they're pretty much just about ready to be transposed just outside so I thought I'd make a start on this. Um, we've got our area under black plastic here that you might have seen us put down a few videos ago. We just put that down to kill the grass underneath. Um, the grass here is just ridiculous and not doing something to it first without machinery to dig it out would have just been really hard so we decided to go this method where we'd just kill all the grass off as best we can for i think we left that there for about two months maybe three months now um, and hopefully most of the grass has died back underneath we've checked it once and it looked like it was doing pretty well so hopefully it's doing all right We've been dealing with Mr. Snake that's moved into our house. Uh, we're hoping to get, <laughs> we're hoping we can get rid of him soon. He makes appearances, and then by the time we've got the catcher here, he's just gone again. So um, it's made me very wary of picking this up um, before we get started. But I'll just have to be pretty careful as I go um, lifting it up. Well, I'm going to clean up around the edges first um, before I take the plastic away, and then we'll see what we're playing with. So the main reason I wanted to give the grass a tidy up before taking the plastic off is that I'm hoping I can reduce the amount of grass seeds going into the new bed area because as we said, the grass is the worst to control. We have a few terrible names for it that'll never make its way onto a video, but just remember we're Australian, so you know, take from that what you will about our language. Alrighty, moment of truth seeing how well the method worked and making sure that there's no one unfriendly underneath. And just a reminder, we did nothing other than covering the area with black plastic for a couple of months here. No other labour involved. So this has worked a real treat. In fact, it's probably even worked better than I thought it was going to work. So I'm very happy about it. Um, we've got the tiller that we can bring through, but I thought I might just start off with our metal rake that we've got and give it a bit of a rake over. Cause I think that these bits and pieces here that are still um, just haven't quite died off hundred percent that I can rip them out easily with this. So we'll give that a crack first before we bring the tiller in. Well, I've run over this a couple of times with the tiller now, so it's looking pretty good. No, I wouldn't say perfect, perfect, but bloody, bloody close. So it's just about five o'clock at the moment, so the garden supplies place is closed for today. So I reckon we're going to park this and we'll come back tomorrow and uh, add the soil and create a border and all the fun stuff um, and plant them out. So until then, let's go check out how the babies are doing today. So we've got the giant pumpkins, one, two, three of those going on here. Some sugar pumpkins here, butternuts, and the Jack Be Quick ones at the back there as well. We've got some bohemians seeded, but they haven't come through, unfortunately. We were dancing in the dark, with every move I make you're falling. Well, I've got the 
soil and compost here now that I've uh, been able to pick up from the garden supplies. Um, Betty unfortunately has decided that the sewing that she has to do for her, her business is apparently too important that she can't help me with the shoveling which is fair. If I had that excuse I might do the same thing so it's up to me I guess. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I am sweaty and pooped and it's dinner time, so I'm gonna call that a good after work, day's work. Still needs to be evened out a little bit. Um, it's obviously, I've dumped a little bit more up this end in the middle than I did down there. Um, it also slips away down there, so maybe it's just a bit of an optical illusion, but um, I reckon tomorrow's job, we'll be leveling it out and then we'll organize something to go around the outside and then maybe we'll start planting if we're lucky. Fingers crossed. All right, guys, catch you tomorrow. All right, so Betty assisted today and we've used the black plastic that was covering the patch before to cut it up and make a border to put the bricks on top of around it to make it a bit nicer. So I've put on the back burner, finishing off around the edges today um, because it's a really good time to actually plant out our pumpkins. Um, it was 32 degrees yesterday, so it definitely wasn't the right time and it was definitely a bit hot to be out here doing much later on in the day um, other than mowing lawns and whatnot. So I didn't actually get stuck into the border yesterday like I wanted to, but um, it's not that hot today. It's pretty early in the morning, no else is around yet. So uh, I'm going to start planting the pumpkins out because if you look at the bottom of them, some of these are screaming to be planted out. So I didn't want to wait too much longer. This is one of the giant pumpkins. And if you have a look underneath, actually this one's not too bad. There's a, there's a couple of little bits hanging out the bottom there. Uh, one of the others is screaming for it. And then we've got um, these babies here. So we've got three of the large pumpkins. We've got the Jack B. Quicks, Butternuts, and the Sugar Pumpkins here. Um, the Bohemian ones didn't, didn't end up panning out, um, so I might try planting some of them later. But this is good for now. So I will end up putting more mulch in the side there. I've just done one barrel load at the moment. Um, I thought we'll give it a crack, just having a solid outside border of bricks. And then the original intention was to do a border on the inside of bricks as well. But I'm starting to think that that might get too hot for the plants to touch, so let me know what you think. We've heaped the soil into two long mounds and run some straw down the middle as a bit of a pathway to walk on. And we've layered mulch on top of the plastic around the border. And it's done! We're pretty happy with how it's turned out for our first real go at a pumpkin patch. So let us know what you think in the comments below and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to follow along on our adventures on our one acre Australian homestead in the making. See you on the next one!